Max. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing really well. Good evening to you, and how are you doing, Julian? Well, um, I have a very unique story for you today, and I really don't know whether I should be smiling or crying. I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm really in between. Um, and I thought, what a better place than the therapy couch to talk about it. You know, sometimes we're just working through things. We're not, we're not just fighting a problem. So that makes sense. That makes sense. Why don't you lay down, make yourself comfortable, and tell us all about it? All right. So here is where it starts. I have a specific kind of house where my my roof is actually flat. It's not the typical, you know, it's, it's a flat roof. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and challenges. I'm familiar with flat roof. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, I notice that there is more and more water that stays on the roof after it rains. And I'm getting concerned. Yeah, it may actually get heavier and heavier and may actually collapse sooner or later. So I don't want to get there because I've already been there with with my other roof. Anyway, that's another Ooh. story for another day. Um, so let's be a little bit proactive for once. So I call a few roofing companies. They come, they have a look and I get you know a few quotations and so on. And then one of them who I feel very good with because the guy actually didn't just look at it, but spent, a good 45 minutes with a broom cleaning up the water from my roof oh, to be able to tell me exactly what the problem would be and how much it would cost. So we built that relationship where I felt like he, he, he must be trustworthy. He spent the time, so he must be trustworthy. So what we agree on is let's proactively remove the current layers, uh, rebuild whatever needs to, re to be rebuilt so that we got you know the roof back on track, and then... Uh, and then cover it again so it's perfectly safe and, and that way make sure that uh, nothing ever gets wet inside the house, that we never have any water leakage of any sort. Which That being the goal, ultimately. Exactly. So it sounds very good. Uh, the price is kind of expensive, but I mean, family safety comes first, so fine. Yeah. The guy is super nice and something happens that is very unusual in France when you work with uh, any... And whether it's a plumber or electrician or whatever, um, I get something that I usually don't get is he shows up the day he said he would show up and actually on time, Doctor. which wow. is very, very unusual. And very, but very professional. So I, very good start. The guy is nice and he gets to, he starts working, remove everything. And he, he actually removed one of the layer and call me up and say, look, Everything is perfectly fine under. I'm not going to charge you any extra by replacing the isolation stuff or replacing any of the wood. Your roof is perfect. I'm just going to make it back to level and, and cover it back. So no extra hidden cost, which fantastic. That never happened before. They always find a way to add some extra cost. So, so far, so good. Yeah, now, I don't know how this is going to go bad. It's... He repairs everything, removes a layer, puts a new layer. Um, Next day, 11.30 p.m., my wife say there is water leaking from the ceiling. Oh. Oh. Ouch. Okay. Oh. So I call, I send him a picture and, um, and, and a message. It's now 11.45 at night p.m. He responds within five minutes. I'll be at your home first thing tomorrow morning. Just put a bucket under it and then we'll figure it out. Next day morning, he comes and he tells me, look, it looks like we fucked it up. We should have, the, the work was not totally finished yet. We should have covered it properly. We did not expect it would be raining. Our bad, uh, we'll fix it. So he goes back to the roof, fixes everything. Um, perfect. Now the, the work is actually done over. Um, I make the final payment. Next day, midnight. Oh, no. uh, there is water coming through the ceiling again. So I'm getting a little bit angry. I'm sending another picture saying, look, now I've paid the full amount. It's still leaking. Uh, midnight 05, the guy responds, I'll be at your home next day, first no. thing in the morning. And then he does right. show I up. I really like this guy now that he's like, <laughs> after he's been paid, that's when I get to get somebody. Exactly. Uh, especially that it was like a 30, 70, 30% uh, up front and 70% at the end. So yeah. I, I feel pretty good about it. He comes and he looks at everything and he said, oh, it looks like we pretty much fucked it up. So he removed part of what they've built on the roof. Um, 
add some other layers, spend a lot of time trying to convince me that it's going to work out, spend some time putting back some painting, bring some additional people in saying, okay, now we need to redo the whole ceiling because it's not just about paint, actually. Some of the stuff is damaged, so we need to replace it. Uh, it's being really straightforward about everything, apologizing every step of the way, which is really not something I never had before <laughs> with plumber, <laughs> electrician, or any of those guys. So I was very shocked. And here is my story. Why, why am I bringing this up? Because it's a terrible story. I was trying to be proactive about fixing something that could be a problem. And we end up actually breaking something that was not broken in the first place. Well, but in the same it could time... Be a problem. It, sorry? You did prove it could be a problem. It, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but I, I made it happen, which... Maybe if I did nothing, I would have saved a few thousand euros and, and I would not have had a problem anyway. But what I'm where I'm at is terrible experience. I mean, from a customer perspective, that was really bad and I really felt bad about it. Uh, but at the same time, they have been very honest, showing up on time, trying to fix their issue. I'm not paying any extra dollar for them, for them fixing their problems. So I, you know, I'm, I'm in between. I don't know if I smile or if I cry. It's a terrible story, but I, I have to say, from a customer experience perspective, they have been honest and proactive, which is more than what I usually get from most companies I deal with. So I wanted to bring up this one. I don't know what you feel about it. I, it sounds to me like this was awesome customer experience and complete ineptitude at doing his job, <laughs> which, which is kind of ironic because it sounds like he certainly, it, from everything you're saying, he knew what he was doing. I really, I don't think he's inept. I think it just a couple of weird coincidences happened or something. Um, but I, if it were me, I probably would walk away feeling good about that. As long as there was no damage to my ceiling from the leaking and um, it, it held and went forward that way. I, I always believe the support person who goes through a really difficult situation with you and is upfront and good through the whole thing. That's the person I want. You know, when I, when I did tech support and we had really awful stuff happen and we got through it, that was the best customer from that day forward. So I, I guess ultimately it's a win unless you looked online and all of a sudden found out this guy had no clue what he's doing. And he does this at every customer. No, so so we checked the reviews um, because I'm still digital savvy in the first place. So uh, right. before signing anything with him, we did check the reviews. We made sure he had all the insurances he, he was supposed to have and all the um, the certificates and everything. So from that perspective, is good. I do believe that people make mistakes and that you could forgive them as long as they try to fix it. I think what I love about it, if I had to try to take something out from that story, make sure that it's applicable to anyone is he tried to fix it. There was a lot of empathy and the way we, you know, he engaged with me. The mistake was pretty terrible and the consequences could have been worse because I mean, it, you know, the water could have stayed in the ceiling. I may not have seen it and he could have built up mold and, and get right, everything right. rotten. With it. So it could have been terrible. Uh, but once again, mistake, happen I, I love the proactivity i love the honesty i love the transparency and i think that's something we really lack very often now the major difference i see with a bigger company is he is the worker and the owner and the customer service person and the right person, it sounds like yeah uh, which uh, obviously you can you you can't get the same relationship when you're an agent in a customer service uh, call center department because that's not your business. But that's really that piece that we need to get. I feel like there's some real learning from that. On You can fuck it up and still get the customer happy if you, if you take ownership for what you've done and if you try your very best to, to fix it. And honestly, that I was disappointed that he could not fix it the first time, that it had to take a second round before it's fixed. But I love the grit that, that it displays. Right. He didn't give up. He dug back in. He made sure it happened. Yeah, I, I, I would give this guy. I was going to say two thumbs up, but I, one solid thumb up. Anyway, um, I, I, 
And as I said before, as a customer experience, I don't think you could ask for more. Now, the, the, the real question is, am I ever going to use him again after? Yeah. Because we were already talking about doing more work. And as I say this, my wife is turning around and giving me the angry eyes like, you're never going to work with this guy ever again. Don't even talk about it. Don't even mention it. Um, but I, I'm thinking, should I ever work with a person like this again? Because he displays great customer experience skills. So, <laughs> But that's terrible doing a video with, with your wife in the same room when, when, when she's been through the same story. Um, <laughs> but again, mistake is hu it's human to make mistakes, but that was a pretty big one. So I, I don't know whether he saved a customer. Uh, at least he saved a bad review because right. that would def right. definitely be in the next thing. He, he, yeah, he, he definitely achieved that. And that's, you know, it... it it sounds like a fluke given what you say about how much he, you know, the reviews were good and he seemed to really know what he was talking about. When you talk to him, it feels like a fluke, but I don't know. Well, you know what? I, I was, I was feeling half good, half bad about it before talking to you. I just feel good about it now. So well, I guess, you know, all you need is a couch. There you go. That fixes everything. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time, Max. Uh, thank you for making me feel better about this. Next week, I promise, that's going to be for you to, to share your story. All right. Okay. And I, I, I have one in mind that, that has some real pain. Great. Let's get there. All right. Talk to you thank next you week. Julian. Take Bye, care. Max.